In this video, you're going to see how to approximate the area under a curve using right rectangles. Yeah, there's uh, several techniques out there. Uh, left rectangles, right rectangles, using the midline of a rectangle, or even trapezoids. All right, so in order to get the ball rolling, uh, let's put a graph up of a particular function. So here is a graph of a function and you probably can't see the um, equation. It's down here, but written really tiny, so I'll put it right there. So now you can see the function. Uh, and what I did is I plugged this into a TI Inspire calculator. Um, you could use a TI-83, and you plug this in, and you'll get this curve. You put this into a graphing calculator, and you don't have to use a TI uh, Texas Instruments. You could use many other Hewlett Packard, Casio, a lot of different calculators do this and they'll have the functionality that you see in this video. Okay, so um, how do you do this or how do you use this right rectangle strategy? So what you do is you imagine, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to uh, find the area uh, of this curve in the domain from negative 3 to 5. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to go from negative 3 all the way over here to 5 and I'm gonna find the area of all this that's under the curve okay so I'm gonna show you how to do that using the right rectangle approach so okay so how do you do this well I'm going to build rectangles that are all going to be uniform in width and I suggest you do that you don't have to um, but as you're doing these problems Uniformity really is the goal because the more uniform you are, the better your strategy is going to turn out in the long run. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here I've got this rectangle and it's going to go up and it's going to hit the curve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over and I'm going to, yeah, well, let's pretend that's a rectangle. Eesh, it's a bad one. But what I'm doing is I'm building a rectangle. And like I'm going to build a rectangle that's going to be two units wide. But I start by going on the right side of the rectangle and I just draw a segment up until I hit the, rect uh, the curve. Here it is, the blue is the actual function drawn. And as I draw the segment up on the right side, as soon as I hit it, I move over to the left. Let's pretend that's a rectangle. Okay, again, let's see. Here I got two units wide rectangle. On the right side, I go up until I hit the curve, and then I slide over to the left. Okay, again, last rectangle, I go up, hit the curve somewhere over there, move over. Boy, it's hard to use this tablet. And boy, I'm not making straight lines today, or straight segments. Okay, so you're gonna have to use your imagination. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, imagine taking the areas of all of these uh, rectangles. It is an approximation because you'll notice that I'm capturing this area and I've got this extra space. I really shouldn't be calculating this area here if I want a nice accurate uh, representation for this area, right? The area under the curve because this part of the rectangle is not under the curve. Um, this part of the rectangle, which I should be doing the area, I'm not including because there's empty space here, right? Here I'm not including this area, but I am including this area. So you, the, the hope is, is that even though you've got excess here and you have a minimum here or under representation of area here, you're hoping that as you calculate all of these areas of the rectangles that it's, an, it's going to be a wash, that the excess and the underrepresented kind of cancel each other out and you're left with a pretty good representation. Okay, well, take my word for it that this is at least a strategy, a good strategy to start with. Okay, what's the uh, area of the first rectangle? Well, it's got a width of two. And, and how do you find the area of a rectangle, obviously? Hopefully it doesn't need to really be said, but I'm going to say it anyway, is that you take uh, the width of the rectangle times its height. So the width is two. And what's the height? Well, the height is going to be this distance up, right? Bam, when it hits the curve. That is really the height of the curve, or it's the distance from the x-axis to the curve. Well, really, this right here 
is the value you would get if you plug in negative one into the function itself. So if I take the y value at this, uh, well actually, you know what, on most calculators, it's not written as y. Well, it is on the TI-83, but more, more generally written, it's going to be the function evaluated at negative one. Okay, how do I find the area of the second rectangle? It still has a width of two, and what's its height? Well, its height is this distance right here, which is just f of one, or in other words, the function evaluated at x equals one. Okay, what's the area of this third rectangle? It's the width of two times the height of this rectangle, which is right here. That's the function evaluated at one, two, three, at x equals three. And then finally over here, we have another rectangle of width two, and what's the height? Well, the height is the function evaluated at five, whatever it is. Okay, so I'm gonna add up the areas of all of these rectangles, and this will give me a good approximation for my area. Again, it's not perfectly accurate, but a pretty good, darn good uh, answer there. Okay, so, Here's how you can do this. Now, you could plug in f of negative one. In other words, you could put in negative one wherever you see an x into the function. You can hand calculate this. What a nightmare that would be. Uh, even these four <clears throat> rectangles, these four evaluations, could become a, a chore after a while, especially due to the complexity of this function. I go back to the calculator, and let's let the calculator do all the work. So when I uh, plug this into the TI Inspire calculator. I also got myself another document, as you can see right over here, with is a calculator document. The way you do that is that you hit Control Document, um, and that'll give you a, a new page. So that basically is not just opening up and erasing what you have. You open up this new page, and then of course you grab, or it says Add Calculator, and you grab that. Anyway, so now I go to the calculator part, and it's waiting. It's saying, okay. How, what would you like to plug in? Well, for the TI Inspire, I'm gonna do two times, and you hit the var key, which is the variable key. You hit var, and it pulls up this f of one, and you'd say, okay, I wanna evaluate this at negative one. All right, and I'm just gonna do this real quick. Um, so here in the, the second rectangle, you hit var, hit f one, and the second one, it was one right here, and I don't know why I have a nested. There we go, it should just be one. Okay, plus two times, and it's going to be, oops, I should have a time sign in there too, right? Okay, so over here I should hit var, hit this, and then I'm gonna put three plus two times, and our last one is going to hit var, Var is for vari variable, obviously. Okay, you hit five. Okay, and then now you press enter and 57.6. Surprisingly enough, 57.6. So I'm gonna go back over here and put 57.6. This is gonna be units squared. I would have to look at the original problem to know what the actual units are. Okay, so that's how you do it with the TI Inspire. Now, wait, just to go back, just here real quickly, go back to the document. When I pulled up these, um, when I had to pull up the function, I had to hit the var key, which was really simple with the TI Inspire. Um, if you do this with the Texas Instruments, eh, it's a little bit more involved, just a tiny bit. So you hit a, car, uh, a, a key that's similar, it's the vars key. Same idea, right? Vars for variables, variables, plural. So you hit vars, you go over to the y vars tab, function, and then you're gonna choose um, your function, which is usually y1, because you'll have the function uh, entered into the first line when you graph the function. So y1 will be the next pick. Okay, so that's how you could do it on the TI-83. I know the TI-84 is pretty similar. All right, so there you have it. That's how you do it. That's how you uh, evaluate this and actually even get a little bit of help from your, with the uh, assistance of your calculator. All right, so 
Go back to mathguide.com, check out our lessons, our quizzes, and our videos. Appreciate that. And I'd appreciate it also if you like the video and you subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and have a fantastic day. Hey, also, what I suggest you do is try experimenting with the sizes of the rectangles. Make them, instead of two units, one unit. Calculate the area. Then, instead of making them one unit, make them a half of unit. Calculate it again. Of course, you're going to double, triple, quadruple. As the size of your rectangle goes, it gets more narrow, you're going to increase the number of rectangles, but you're going to get a far more accurate answer.